Good evening and thank you for joining us for Kremto News at 11 tonight. I'm Mark Handrahan. Our top story tonight, the city of Spokane is planning to make changes to several South Hill intersections to help ease traffic and to prepare for the next 20 years of growth. Kremto's Kyle Simchuk shows us what's now being considered. South Hill drivers know just how crowded Regal Street can get, especially in the morning and evening. There's shopping centers, restaurants, schools and apartments all along here. Now the city of Spokane believes there's a way to encourage drivers to use a different route. That solution may involve building a roundabout at 37th and Ray, a main arterial connecting the South Hill to Interstate 90. The city believes drivers would exit Regal sooner if traffic along 37th improved. The roundabout would replace what's now a four-way stop at the entrance of Ferris High School and right outside Kelsey Asher's front door. It's news to me, for sure. Uh, it would, it would. I mean, obviously we wouldn't be here if that happened. That's because the roundabout would run right through her living room. I don't, I don't know if it would be. To be honest, I don't think it would really help. Two or three homes would have to be demolished to make room. Kelsey and her neighbor both rent homes that are owned by the city. I. Deal with things as they come. I'm not going to make it the end all, but uh, kind of a surprise, you know. Roundabouts are becoming more common around Spokane as the population booms. Spokane Public Schools told the city it's interested in adding a roundabout outside Ferris, but also concerned as to how well new drivers would be able to navigate it and yield to pedestrians. A report to the city suggests an educational program targeted towards students. In addition to the roundabout, the city is also interested in installing a traffic light two blocks east at 37th and Freya, another major arterial. The proposal will be added to the city of Spokane's 20 year street projects list. It's unclear when construction would begin. Reporting on the South Hill tonight, Kyle Simchuk, Krem 2 News. Spokane's Avista Stadium could see $23 million in renovations over the next four years. Spokane County's proposal includes 24 renovations that comply with Major League Baseball regulations, including new field lighting, a new batting cage, and even new dugouts. If their proposal passes, they have until the 2026 baseball season to complete all those renovations. Basketball is back. The nation's top-ranked Gonzaga Bulldogs had no trouble cruising by Dixie State 97-63 to in the kennel tonight. Grem 2's Brenna Green has the latest from campus. It was the night of the double-double here at Gonzaga as both Julian Strother and Chet Holmgren achieved that illustrious stat line. Julian had 17 points and 10 rebounds with his biggest moment of the night coming as he had a fast break and one. And then on the very next play, he had a fast break dunk. Holmgren had an even more unreal stat line as he had 13 points, 13 rebounds, 7 blocks, and 6 assists. Chet became the first D1 player over the last 25 seasons with 10 points, 10 rebounds, 5 assists, and 5 block shots in their collegiate debut. It was pretty cool. Uh, uh, it's pretty cool to hear that, but um, you know, I'm just happy that we were be, uh, able to go out there and you know, come out with the win. Uh, we had a lot of great performances from other guys on the team. It's what Chet is. That's what he's always done is he's always stuffed the stat sheet. There's lots of guys out there that, that might score more than him, but that's what's so unique about Chet. He can score the ball from all over the floor, inside, outside. He's a versatile ball handler. He's a super unselfish playmaker. And then we talked about you know his ability to, to block the shots. That's obviously what makes him so unique. Up next for the Zags is the big one. Texas coming to the kennel on Saturday. Gonzaga number one preseason in the country. Texas number five. It is the highest ranked matchup between two teams to ever happen in the kennel. That game tips at 730 on ESPN2. Reporting in the kennel, I'm Brenna Green. From two sports. Brenda, thank you very much. Tonight, a construction accident left some workers injured on North Division Street. The accident was reported at around 4 o'clock this afternoon after three people were hurt. It's not a cl exactly clear what happened, but some of the workers had to be rescued using a ladder truck due to the location of the incident. Currently, none of the people injured have life threatening injuries. All right, let's talk weather now. After a rainy start to the day here in Spokane, things cleared up and then quickly cooled off. Let's get outside to meteorologist Thomas Patrick and the Outdoor Weather Center. Thomas, 
34 degrees out there at this hour. <laughs> Emphasis on the cooled off part, Mark. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> yeah, it got so cold out here, but more importantly, it's still kind of windy. In fact, the winds are coming in from my right, which would be from the east. The airport reporting the winds from the south. So a bit of swirling going on, at least near our uh, studios here on the South Hill. But boy, does it feel very cold outside. It's going to get a little bit colder by the time we get to the morning hours. Probably low 30s, if not upper 20s in most areas across the inland northwest. It won't be a cold rain this time around for tomorrow morning, but it'll be just be cold nonetheless. In fact, that's what it looked like this morning with that cold rainfall. Did not record any snow here in Spokane. Some areas up to the north, like in Sandpoint and our northeastern Washington locations, did get a half an inch in a, a half an inch of snow at most, but that has all cleared out for tonight. Clear skies aligned for those temperatures to pretty much free fall. Now later on in the week, tracking more rainfall and still no snow, at least not yet in the immediate forecast. Just a tick warmer heading into the weekend. We'll show you just when the next batch of rain does arrive in a few minutes. Sounds good, Thomas. Thank you very much. We are learning more about the Spokane teen who was allegedly murdered by his girlfriend's father. The accused killer told police he killed 19 year old Andrew after learning the teenager allegedly sold his daughter into sex trafficking. Andrew's family, however, disputes that claim. Tonight, Krem 2's Amanda Rowley shares a statement the family released about who they say Andrew was. I spoke with Andrew's mother over the phone today, and she told me they buried Andrew yesterday and are still processing this loss in the family. Since this is an open investigation, the victim's family cannot say much more than the statement that they shared with us today. In a statement from the victim's family, they say Andrew was a foster child who came into their home when he was six months old. The family says he was born with cerebral palsy, autism, and diagnosed as being developmentally delayed. After searching for Andrew for about a year, the family is now grieving his death. They say the claims from the man who admitted to killing Andrew are hurtful and only added to their grief. The statement also reiterates that the FBI and Washington State Patrol confirmed they are not investigating the murder victim for sex trafficking. The family is confident Andrew will get justice. They're asking the public to withhold judgment until the investigation is complete. Last night, Andrew's family held a candlelight vigil to honor his life. I don't understand why everybody's taking this side on it. There's a 19-year-old that lost his life here, and people are forgetting that. He died in a trunk car. Nobody wants to die. This is an ongoing investigation, but here's what we know from court documents. The murder suspect admitted to police he killed Andrew after he says he learned the 19-year-old sold his daughter into sex trafficking. He later abandoned his car with Andrew's body in the trunk. Now, Spokane police say detectives are still working to confirm the suspect's claims about sex trafficking. Beyond that, police cannot share any further information at this time. Reporting in the newsroom, Amanda Rowley, Krem 2 News. Tomorrow, Ferris High School is hosting a COVID-19 and flu vaccine clinic for kids ages 5 and older. Kids from any school district are allowed to participate. The Pfizer vaccine will be available for kids ages 5 and older. Those under 17 years old will need to have the consent from a parent or a guardian before getting the Pfizer vaccine. The Johnson & Johnson and Moderna vaccine also available for those 18 and older. And the flu vaccine will also be available for those 5 years old and older. And looking ahead to tomorrow as part of our Boomtown Week, we take a closer look at the latest timeline for the North-South Freeway. I think that's really important uh, to make segments drivable sooner so the public can see their tax dollars at work. So if you're heading up to Deer Park and you can pop off and jump on Trent and go all the way up north pretty quickly, that's going to make a big deal in, in your quality of life. The president's infrastructure bill and how that could also be a factor. Could it possibly move up the timeline to complete the project sooner? And I believe we're looking at a uh, potential of 2030. Are you as a state legislator going to be able to influence how that money is spent and where it goes? Krem 2's Whitney Ward sat down with Spokane State Representative Marcus Riccelli to learn more about how soon drivers can expect the next portion of the freeway to be ready for drivers, plus how many houses had to be destroyed to make way for the project and what can be done to try to create more opportunities for affordable housing in Spokane. That's tomorrow night right here on Krem 2 at 6 o'clock. All right, coming up as we continue our Boomtown series this week, we'll discuss a study that names Spokane Valley as a place of high economic growth. We are back in just 90 seconds.